So what does object relational mapping actually mean? Well, let me show you by an example I love and I pretty much use every single day entity framework. So let's dive right into the code and spare you any definitions here. You can see this is the default example web API project when you create a web API project with Visual Studio 2022, now version 17.04.0 and also .NET 7, all right? And what I did here first is I changed this a little bit instead of the type date only, I'm using date time, and I also added the property ID here for our database now. So you can say regarding the term object relational mapping, this already here is our object, our model, our class, it's the object, all right? Now, what I also did is I already changed the controller a little bit using now a weather forecast service that is actually returning this randomly generated data instead of using a FAT controller, so-called FAT controller, where the controller has got all the logic. So I'm already using the repository pattern here regarding the repository pattern, check out the info card, I've got another video about that. And now when we run this, let's have a quick look in Swagger, there it is. We get our randomly, should get our, there it is, randomly generated weather forecasts, all right? You see ID is zero everywhere, so this is not really great, but now we will change that. And for that, the best example, if you are in the .NET world, is Entity Framework. Again, for that, I've got another video for all the implementation details, but in general, what you do here is you create a database context, again, using also the repository pattern and unit of work pattern. And in here now, you just configure this thing by telling Entity Framework you're using SQL Server. This is the, the actual database server. Database name in our example will be ORM example for object relational mapper example. Trusted connection and trust server certificate is also set to true because I have installed the database here locally on my development machine. If that's the same case for you, then the configuration is also the same. And then here, really important, this is now our database set the forecasts in the end is the table you will see in the database then. So here we will find our weather forecast. Now with that, let's use code first migration with entity framework. So here now we can say .NET EF migrations at initial create for instance, because this is our initial migration and we also want to create the database with this migration and with the help of the code first migrations then we can map our weather forecast model to the actual database table and i guess i have to stop the application of course so i did this i hope let's try this one more time we run the migration, build started, build succeeded. That's nice. All right, there we go. And now we've got a new folder here, migrations. And in here now we see what will actually happen. So it will, Entry Framework will create a new table, forecasts. Again, this is the same thing you can see here. And it will create a table with the following columns, the ID, the date, the temperature and Celsius and the summary. So exactly the same stuff you can find here. Just ignore this one because this is in essence a function that we return something. But here we've got our ID, the date, the temperature and Celsius and the summary. All right, this looks great. Just as a side note, if you wanna roll back the migration, it just drops the table forecast. But here now we can say .NET EF database update. This command will also generate, create our database. And in a sec, we should see, yep, these are the whole statements here. It again creates the table. And now in SQL Server, this is not the database, this is from my .NET Jumpstart course. You can have a look if you want to. And now let's just refresh this thing. And there's our table with here the forecast table. This is something used internally, don't worry about that. But now here, forecasts with our columns. And now, of course, there is no data whatsoever in here, but let's just add some data. For instance, it is 20. 22 November 16th and the temperature is three for instance summary bracing I'm just looking something up here and let's just add one more 17th temperature here is then minus 12 this is a great example 
and they call it cool. Why not? This is great. Okay, so this is now the data from the database. Again, when we see here in the code currently, the weather forecast service is just returning randomly generated data, right? So the, these were the the five actually here one, two, three, four, five, that that have been gener uh, randomly generated. And now to make use of entry framework, our mapper, we need a constructor and inject our data context here. So let's do that real quick. This is now our constructor. We inject the data context. We call this context. We add this field here at the underscore. So everything looks nice. And in here now, what we can actually do is we just return context. So this is actually now our database already. And here we can access our table forecasts. And that's it. To array if you want to, right? And we can actually remove our summaries here, not necessary anymore. Let's just run this one more time. This is already our new version. We try this out hit execute. And now we really get the data from our database. And again, if you want to know how to implement this stuff, just click on the video on the screen. And if you want to know more about the repository pattern, just click on the other video.